Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, nearly 170 Rohingya refugees are detained by the Indian police and now face threat of deportation. Nine killed and six arrested in bloody Sunday police raids in the Philippines. Thai prosecutor indicts 18 protesters on sedition and charges of insulting the monarchy. And in our video section, we take a look at the Texas electricity blackout and the failures of deregulation. In our first story, nearly 170 Rohingya refugees have been detained by Indian police forces in the Jammu region. The detention took place over the weekend after local authorities conducted an identification drive. People were brought to the MAM stadium for a biometric verification and COVID tests. All those who were unable to provide documents were then detained in the Hiranagar sub-jail. The jail has been converted into a temporary holding facility. As reported by the Indian Express, senior police officials have announced that the refugees will now be deported back to Myanmar. Local media also reported refugees fleeing their relief camps following detentions. Around a million people from the predominantly Muslim Rohingya community fled Myanmar in 2017. They were escaping military-led violence and massacres, which had an estimated death toll of around 10,000. As per government estimates, nearly 40,000 Rohingya refugees reside across various settlements in India. A majority of the refugees are undocumented, and while some do have UN-issued cards, these are not recognized by the Indian government. Over 300 refugees are reportedly being held in jails for not having so-called valid documentation. Over 6,000 refugees live in, live in relief camps in Jammu and Kashmir. Deportation to Myanmar poses a serious threat to, to life, especially since the military led coup on February 1st. In our next story, nine people were killed during a raid by security forces in the Philippines on March 7th. At least six people were also arrested on what is being called Bloody Sunday. The joint raids were conducted by the Philippines National Police and the Armed Forces in the Calabarzon region. As reported by the Enquirer, the police claimed that they had gone there to serve warrants for loose firearms and illegal possession of explosives. Among those arrested and killed were prominent social leaders and activists. The raids took place in Laguna, Cavite, Batanga and Rizal. Sunday's raids took place just days after President Rodrigo Duterte ordered security forces to kill communist insurgents in the country. The Duterte regime has led a violent campaign against supposed communists in the Philippines. A central tactic in this has been the practice of red tagging. Dissenters have been targeted and accused of being members or supporters of the banned Filipino Communist Party New People's Army. The raids on March 8th occurred just a few weeks after similar raids on an indigenous sanctuary school. The government had also introduced a contentious anti-terror law which will give security forces a wider mandate to arrest and detain people. Legal proceedings on the law are ongoing in the Supreme Court following 37 petitions against it. We now go to Thailand where 18 activists have been indicted for their participation in pro-democracy protests in 2020. Three protest leaders are facing charges related to sedition and the contentious Les Majesty law, which is about abusing the monarchy. The law criminalizes actions considered an insult to the monarchy and carries a prison sentence of up to 15 years. As reported by Reuters, the other 15 activists will face trial for sedition and violating a ban on public assembly. A Thai prosecutor announced in the indictments on March 8th. According to Lawyers for Human Rights, a human rights group, at least 63 people have been charged under laws regarding insulting the monarchy since November. Those charged under the law are often detained for long periods of time. Thailand has been witnessing a resurgence of pro-democracy protests over the past few weeks. Protesters are demanding the resignation of the military-supported government of Prime Minister Prayut chan -ucha. They have also demanded reforms in the constitution and limits on the power of the monarchy. Security forces have used tear gas, bait and charges and arrests to suppress the protests. Activists including prominent movement leaders have also been denied bail multiple times. A protest march against the detention of pro-democracy activists was held in the capital Bangkok on March 6th. For our final story, we go to the United States where a widespread grid failure affected millions in the state of Texas. As the rolling blackouts were put in place, people were left with no electricity or heating for days during a snowstorm. Dozens of deaths and several injuries were reported during this time. Here is NewsClick Editor-in-Chief Prabir Purkayasta examining the context of this crisis. real issue was that there is no incentive to provide reliability for the grid. The entire the deregulation, and Texas is one of the most extreme cases of deregulating the uh, electrical system, as well as the energy system also. That, that means the nat natural gas and other systems. So that basically it was left to the retailers, traders, the electricity producers to game the system that if there is a scarcity, <clears throat> if the grid power is short, the grid is short of power, then the price goes up. So there is a perverse incentive therefore to have a crisis by which you can then make more money. And this particular case, the price of electricity went up from $22 to $9,000 per megawatt hour. That's a huge, huge jump. And it remained there for about five days. Now this total amount that 
extra payment it had to the the uh, grid forced the people to pay to the generators what is in the range of 45 billion dollars out of which 33 hours of this kind of extreme uh, pricing was thought to be what the arcat Ar made a mistake the electrical the grid operator essentially arcat is really the grid operator they made a mistake and they persisted with this beyond the period required but nevertheless even the 3 days which this was uh, really enforced which would have been what according to the uh, the, reg the regulator the power utility commission or what whatever it's called that they said it should have been there only three days not five days but even if you take that into account it's still 29 billion dollars extra why is this extra money being paid because when the electricity supply drops the prices go up this is the nature of the electricity market that is created and therefore there is no incentive for people to see there is no scarcity and in fact as i said there is a perverse incentive to actually promote a scarcity and then of course the utilities and producers can push in more power at a higher cost so this is one part of it and of course the fact that texas had no reserves in terms of interconnection with the larger grid that the us has it has two uh, grids with that operate national level grids that operate texas is isolated from both as a part of its texas exceptionalism that texas will do something completely different from all others so i think if we look at it this is the key issue why there was no attempt to winterize the equipment no attempt to look at reliability the belief was markets will deliver the whatever is required and that reliability was not an objective of the market the objective of the market is quote unquote efficiency and efficiency is achieved only by the pricing mechanism this is the under underlying philosophy that the texas grid had and unfortunately as somebody has said uh, electricity is what the, the laws of nature is what electricity obeys not the nature of the market i think the biggest lesson to learn from this is electricity is a necessity and if you do not consider the stability of the grid then you are not going to really be able to service the people and if texas has shown that even with abundance of resources without proper regulation the markets will fail that's all we have time for today we'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world until then keep watching people's dispatch